Uh, we have some areas where ivy has probably been present in the park for greater than 50 years. And in those areas, the ivy creates a monoculture, basically what we would call an ivy desert. So it doesn't participate in the local ecology, it just sort of takes over and is pretty much like a schoolyard bully is the way I explain it when I'm um, talking to children about it. And if we leave ivy in the park for too long, it will basically reduce biodiversity in this area. So the Ivy Project is a collaboration between myself and the Stanley Park Ecology Society uh, as a part of the Environmental Art Project in Stanley Park. So partnering with SPES, we've been looking at how the ivy can be used to um, weave and crochet, um, make various structural shapes that are sculptures that can be um, dried out and returned to the forest and actually participate in the ecology in a positive way. What's done with it normally is it's pulled out and then it's incinerated. So from an ecological point of view, I felt that this was a much more ecological and beneficial way in which to work with the ivy. So this is English ivy here, as you can see, it's, it's an evergreen species and it has triangular shaped leaves, uh, common, and then it has these white veins. Um, those are easy ways to identify it. It has little roots down here, if you can see, there's little roots that will root inside dead wood or into the soil, but it climbs along the ground and basically smothers other plants, so they can't get any light. This here is actually English ivy. Uh, it looks like a, a tree, it's quite large. This ivy was taken from Stanley Park off of a tree that it was growing on, and it's gotten extremely large and thick and this ivy adds a lot of biomass to the trees, so it is a problem in terms of it um, pulling down the trees or adding weight, and they, they may fall over due to that. It can't be composted because it just reroots, so what to do with that biomass becomes a, a bit of a problem other than burning, and that's where um, the partnership begins, where I'm an artist that usually is on the lookout for unwanted materials, things that are um, in large quantity, that are free, that I can take and repurpose, and often bring community in to um, participate in that process. Often in uh, restoration projects, you might have some slope instability where you have erosion or there's a steep slope. And in this case, we have a site is that it's steep and it's quite degraded. Uh, there's not a lot of vegetation on it. So what we've done is Sharon has come up with a way of weaving the ivy together into a mat so that it doesn't continue eroding. It's like putting a blanket over the, the slope. So the bionetting was crocheted a couple of months before we installed it on the roof of the nature house and then hung to dry in the parks board work yard for a few months in the sun. So we knew it would be nice and dead and not reroot once we installed it. And we've pinned that down with some cedar stakes and we've added some soil and mulch and planted the site with some what they're called wattles, um, made out of willow and dogwood, such species, native species that can grow from cuttings. For small communities that don't have that kind of money to be buying the, um, the bio netting that um, uh, is the coconut and palm fiber, the intention of being able to pull ivy from the flat areas, process it in some way such as crocheting it as a community where you can kind of create a community celebratory event around making the netting and then going back to the area where there is a slope and pulling the ivy that's on the slope and then installing the ivy netting that you've made as a replacement, um, that's, that's kind of exciting. It's sort of a, a potential there that's quite fascinating. And it's a really interesting project and it's a, and it's a great way to use the ivy to uh, restore an area and make sure that it doesn't continually get degraded. I think it's great. Today was the first time I actually saw it um, after the weather had started to weather the pieces in its natural habitat, adapting to its transformation from the actual live ivy that we had just pulled and worked with and you could see the roots and the green and now it's starting to decay and transform into another piece. I, I believe art and science does mix and in this case we have had um, good success in terms of 
using an artistic way to enhance an environmental value in the park. And we're also learning from that experience. So from a scientific perspective, we're collecting data on the regrowth of the ivy. Is it spreading again from our reintroduction? Is there any native species using it, plants or animals? So we're getting a lot of scientific information that hasn't been collected on ivy by incorporating it in an artistic way into the park.